And it's that time again, guys. Mothberg must diminish. Mothberg must diminish. Guys, we have our Tupperware. We are blasting our way through this Tupperware. And here's what we got, guys. A few Pyactes specimens from the Florida Keys, which are always a pot potential very cool thing. And we will mount these moths together here shortly. There are a few of these Pyactes, which are small Noctuid that belong to this, this genus of Noctuids where there's about seven or eight different species in the Florida Keys that are very, very difficult to tell apart. I don't think I'll be able to identify them here them, and then take a really close look when I get them off the board, um, which category they fall into. So uh, let's get this going. These might look like boring brown moths to you, but to a Lepidopterist that's doing taxonomy, these boring brown moths are actually where the science is at because it's the things that people know the least about. So enjoy the enjoy getting to know my little basic brown moths or BBM as we call them. All right, so we've got our Pyactes. What's the wing pattern on there? What do you think? All right, folks, we have five Pyactes sp specimens mounted here and one mystery moth, which I think is a Macala paralid or something like that. I'm not sure, it's too greased. But guys, we're gonna just put paper over these wings and be done. See you in a week to all of our Pyactes here on this board and we'll get some identification labels on them then. All right, it's been over a week. We're going to take some of our Pyactes off the board. And we're gonna try and do this as fast as possible because I got five of them on here. And I don't want you guys to sit and watch me just take pins off of a, off of a board. There are six Pyactes that live in the Florida Keys that have been recorded. Now, telling them apart is not easy, and you're gonna see why it drives me nuts. This genus drives me crazy. Uh, these are two Pyactes species that we caught in Key Largo in uh, July of this year. And we are gonna try to identify them, but I don't have a whole lot of confidence in my ability to identify Pyactes. So we might have to call on some of our friends who are better at this and smarter than I am, the Pyactes smart guys. So we're gonna check that out. These could be two different species here. This one on the top has this cream colored little spot in the middle of the wing. And this guy here does not have that which kind of makes me suspect that they might be a different, they, they might be different species. So we'll see, we'll see what we can figure out. Um, but right now I'm giving them the, the date and location label. And you know, if I misidentify them, I'll let somebody smarter than me figure it out. So uh, here we go, guys, we're gonna try to identify these guys. And I'm All right, folks, so we have six species of Pactes that occur in the Florida Keys. We have Fusessens, which I don't believe either of those two are, okay? Because this guy doesn't seem to have any of those white spots. We have a new species of Pactes, which Jim Trowbridge is working on, and it doesn't have any of the cream spots either. Now, Pactes, Acutangula? Possibly. Let me see if I have 
any better images of that one. Oh yeah, possibly. Yeah, that's a possibility. In fact, I may actually be calling this one here on the right, Acutangula. And here's why. It's got that bright spot on the inner margin of the forewing. It's got the little white spot here on the outer tip of the, of the forewing and not a whole lot else going on in the middle. And that's exactly what we see on this one. We see it's got that cream colored spot in, on, in by the, where the forewing meets the thorax and then the little white spot out on the tip. Um, this one has been found you know, almost all the months in the Florida Keys and pretty wide range. So uh, it's a pretty common moth down the Florida Keys. But before we go there, that's a strong possibility is Acutangula. Now, this one here, Nubifera, I am not going for Nubifera on our specimens. I'm, I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing the nubifera, uh, that, that this cream colored streak that goes from the tip of the forewing down to the lower forewing margin. I'm not seeing that on either of these two specimens. So I'm probably going to vote no on nubifera, but possibly asper. It's a toss up, guys, between asper and nana. Nana, I, I believe, is the most common species. But this one right here has this cream-colored blotch on the inside. And both Asper and Nana have it. Let me see what the mounted specimens look like. Let me click on this one real quick. Please tell me I have a better... No, that's the best, best picture of Asper that I have. Um... It's possible, guys. This one on the left is possibly Asper. Um, and let's try going to the next one and see what Nana looks like. Oh, Nana's got... This one doesn't have any variability. Now, I'm going to go with Asper. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Asper, guys. And if I'm wrong, Jim Trowbridge will correct me. But I'm thinking that, that this one is Asper on the left, Acutangula on the right. So Asper and Acutangula. I'm gonna make some labels real quick and get these guys their proper labels. All right, before I do that, I actually, looked up the moth photographers group guys look at all the piactes that exist in the moth photographers group we have just in the florida keys we have fusessens we've got uh acutangulas here which is what i'm calling one of mine i mean i'm gonna actually click on that species page because there's actually two Two plates. We got plate number two here. And here's where we have more Acutangula. We've got Nubifera. We've got Asper and Nana all on this page. So let's click on one of the Acutangula numbers. It's going to bring us to a page. Look at the range on Acutangula. Just Miami and the Florida Keys. And we've got... Jim Trowbridge is the pretty much the only author here, or Jim Vargo is there too. But notice how it's got, all the specimens have the little white spot in here, the, the little spot out here on the forewing, outer forewing, and then kind of like a little bit of a cream colored thing going on in the middle here. To some extent, they all have the same marking. That's why I'm calling this one here, Acutangula right there. So I'm gonna give this guy the label that I'm calling it. And hopefully, 
I'm right. Jim Trowbridge, if you ever see this video, let me know what you think, buddy. Um, the other one, let me go back out. Uh, the other one is, well, we have Nubifera, which we don't believe it is because Nubifera has got this, this line that goes down through here, which it's not looking like that's any of our species have that. But Asper has, let's see if we can click on our Asper. Again, look at the range on Asper. Southernmost Florida, Florida Keys, and the Bahamas and the Caribbean, okay? That specimen there has got very little markings on the four wings. But now when we have, oh boy, look how variable. Well, it's got, they've got this, they all have some variation of this cream banding in here. They've got the four wing tip They've got this thing in here going on uh, on the inner margin. But boy, oh boy, not, a, not an easy group, guys, to identify. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my label on it. I'm going to call this one Asper. And again, if I'm wrong, Jim Trowbridge can correct me. So, Okay, folks, we have our Pactes. And I'm going to put them in our little pinning box here. And we're going to uh, get them all labels. And I went into some of my uh, websites and whatnot and found that the most likely identification for this species is going to be Pyactes acutangula. And these guys are notoriously difficult to identify. So if you have a better idea, do let me know. But acutangula is what I've got for now. And so I'm gonna give, I made some labels already. And I'm gonna get my little protom block in here. And we are gonna get busy labeling our specimens because Labeling specimens is one of the most valuable things you can do. And I've got, by the way, I've got date and location labels as well. I just haven't created them yet. We're going to do that soon. And we'll get those on there as well. And that is one of the most valuable things you can do as a collector because your specimens are going to wind up with somebody and it's more, much more valuable for scientists to know where they were caught and when, and then trying to guess. And you know, these, this way, guys, we have we have uh, some good scientific data. So I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. It helps out the channel if you like the video. Comment down below if you have uh, any different ideas. This one I'm suspect might be a different species. We'll see though. Um, and we'll see about all of them actually, because I'm not the Pyactes expert. Um, but guys, we have a, we're having a great time here. So guys, like the video, subscribe. Till next time, let's get out there and find some really cool bugs and curate these collections that we love so much. Take care, guys. Bye now.